everybody, Wayne here. In today's Let's Play, I'm going to do a turn one tutorial of Storm Over Jerusalem, The Roman Siege, designed by Scott Blanton and published by Multiman Publishing. This is a two-player area impulse war game covering the Siege of Jerusalem in 70 AD. It is a two-player game, however, I will be showing it off and playing it solitaire. Now let's get out of the table for a closer look. Storm Over Jerusalem is an area impulse, area movement war game that takes place over eight turns. The game is divided into two different sides. The Romans, represented by the red units, which you can see them here in these areas on the exterior walls of Jerusalem, along with these zones where Roman reinforcements come from. And the Judean player, who has units that are either blue or purple. These units, with Simon or John in the corner, represent two different factions that were active at that time. There will also be a Simon and John leader unit chit that can come into play. You'll see that later on during the actual playthrough. Now, each turn is going to start off with a draw phase. We're going to draw X number of cards, X being what it says on the turn track for which side draws X number of cards, along with who controls these two areas that get grant bonus uh, card draws. You then go to the impulse phase. The game will take place over a series of alternating impulses, or excuse me, the turn will. Alternating impulses with the Roman player going first, where you can either play a card, which the cards themselves, they're going to have the title, they're going to have a card number up here, they're going to have a number in a circle. Uh, for the Romans, it's red. For the Judeans, it's blue. For the Romans, that number, you can discard this card instead of playing it for the event. You can discard it and build uh, Roman siege towers that are the strength of that number or for the Judeans you can they can discard their card and use it to rebuild sections of the wall that have been damaged by Roman assaults there are different events that are going to happen some you can play you just discard the card and it's going to come back later others such as this one says removed if played for the event if you don't want to play a card you can also activate areas you can activate an area and you can activate any number of units in that area for either movement attack or assault, which I will go into um, covering during the actual playthrough. And then finally, the Roman player or the Judean can pass. If the Roman player passes, then the Judean player, assuming they want to have an impulse, will have to discard a card, and then they can carry out their impulse. Otherwise, if they don't, then the turn will end. The end of turn phase is basically going to be checking for the Judean supply restriction, which is listed in a couple of charts here, right on the board. Um, and then you're going to keep track of it with a counter counter on a track right here. Basically, that shows the tightening supply situation, right? The more desperate uh, situation for the Judeans as time went by and the Romans encircled um, and besieged them. What that does is that prevents Judeans, the Judean player, from flipping spent units, which, you know, in an area impulse game, right? You move your counters from an area to area. They conduct combat or movement, etc. They're then flipped from their fresh side to their back um, spent side. With supply, you can flip them back over. However, if an area, if you have an area you roll and it says, okay, two areas have to be designated out of supply, the Judean player will have to pick two areas that have spent units, and they're going to have to um, select two areas that will no longer um, refresh, at least during that turn. After that, the Roman player can pick up any siege towers if they want, because you are limited by the supply counters here. The Roman player then gets up to six reinforcement units coming out of the reinforcement zones, and they can place them in any adjacent area. You then check for control of areas 27, Harad's Palace, and area 22, Temple Mount, um, to determine VPs for each of those turns. And then you're going to check for the Judean leader, so they haven't been placed on the map by the Judean player. It actually is a uh, victory point for each one to the Roman player. You're going to check to see if the turn ends. If it's not turn 8, you're going to go on to the next turn. If it's turn 8, the game will end. Victory is determined in basically two ways. For the Roman player, if they capture both Temple Mount here, Area 22, and Harad's Palace, Area 27, so both of the VP locations, and they hold them at the end of the turn, it is an automatic victory for the Roman player. If the... If you make it all the way to the end of the eight turns, you're going to add up the victory points, which are the VPs that have been accrued from holding these VP locations. Any victory points that have accrued from some of the cards, some of them have um, VP abilities. VPs from the leaders. Remember, if you have leaders in play, the Romans get a uh, victory point. And then finally, you're going to check the dead pile. You're going to add up the total number of units, and those will turn into victory points. 
whoever has the higher amount is going to win. So for this game, it is up to the Judean player. It is their goal to drag out to the very end. They need to last through the eight turns. And while not while building up their other victory points, knowing that they're likely to lose more actual units than the Romans. And it's the Romans player's job to basically assault and push and go on the offensive and try to get through and capture both these areas so you can get that sudden death victory. I think that covers the very basics overall um, overview of the game itself. Um, let's go ahead and I think everything's all set up, but let me double check and we'll get onto an actual playthrough of at least the first turn and I will describe everything as it goes so you guys know how this game works. One last thing we'll cover before we dive in is the units themselves. They are uh, colored by their side, obviously. Um, they'll have unit information in the top left. They'll have the setup area in the bottom left. Be some nice graphics on here. And then there is going to be a series of numbers on the right-hand side. There's the fresh side and the spent side. The fresh side, it's going to be firepower, defense, and movement. And on the spent side is just defense because when they are spent, they're not going to be attacking or moving. Um, you're just going to rely on the defense number. So when it comes to the actual mechanisms of how attacking, um, defending, um, assault, all that works and movement, I will go ahead and cover that in the actual playthrough here in a couple seconds. Um, the last thing is movement. Movement points, you can see the numbers. It's, only, it's fairly low on most of them, twos and threes for the most part. Um, movement is fairly simple. It's going to be when you activate an area, right? And you activate whatever uh, fresh units you want. You're going to be able to move them from area to area. It is going to be one movement point per area, unless you are leaving an area that contains enemy units or you're entering an area that contains enemy units. Um, that will cost an extra movement point. Um, and then for the Romans, obviously the walls are a huge obstacle, so they cannot freely move across the walls. Um, they will only be able to assault across them until the wall has been breached or they build a siege ramp in which case they will be able to use the siege ramp to get into that area to cross the wall so again we will cover that in the actual playthrough so i think it's time let's get that started all right first turn of storm over jerusalem so first off is the draw phase now you guys can't really see it i'm sure because it's pretty far away but it tells you um each turn what how many cards each side gets for the judeans turn one it's going to be three for the romans six However, remember the bonus areas I mentioned, so the Judeans control both of them, which, by the way, you can see there are, there's no control markers here, it's actually printed on the map, but there are control markers provided, so when an area changes control, so say the Romans, right, they break into New City Northwest, Area 13 here, they need to control the area, I'd be able to place a Roman control marker on here, showing that they can now control that area. It could also, obviously, the Judeans, if the Romans are unlucky, or the Judeans are smart, or just whatever, they're very, uh, make good tactical decisions, they could go ahead and leave the walls and maybe take over an area outside, which they probably won't hold, but that will help them to gain more supply, it reduces the supply restrictions marker, assuming it's above one. Um, you can't go any lower than one. Um, let me see. Other than that... Yeah, I think that's it. So, turn one, again, three and six. However, for the Judeans, they control these two areas. Um, with the areas, and you can see, and I'm going to count off the cards, so they actually get five, right? And the Romans get six, so one, two, three, four, five. Um, with the, and again, it's a two-player game of playing solitaire, so I'm going to have to manage a couple hands of cards. Sorry, guys, I know a little bit of a bummer. Um, let's see here, what was I going to say? Let's do, let's just put the Judean ones over here, and then, oops, one, two, three, four, five, six for the Romans. Put Roman cards here. Um... You know, the areas obviously are numbered, right? So you see the numbers, it starts off one, goes all the way up to what, 28, I believe, 29, no, 30, it looks like, okay. Um, and then there are the zones on the outside as well is the numbers, you can see they're colored differently. The greenish number here, which is that is uh, not as thick line. Then there's a yellow one that gets thicker. And then there is the orange, which has the thickest little wall, thickest line around it. Those are listed here for defensive value. So, you know, different terrain in area movement. These are impulse, right? Each area is going to have um, a different terrain value or different defensive value, excuse me, which we'll cover when we get into the actual combat. So look at the cards here for the Romans. We're looking at, they have a siege ramp card. Ooh, that's nice. So during for your impulse, the Roman player can build a siege ramp, which is definitely gonna help getting into an area. Um, ballista, which when declaring an attack or an assault, add three firepower. So just, you know, makes it a more powerful attack. Oh, another ballista card. Uh, force into hiding. 
plays part of your impulse if the Roman player controls one or more city areas. Okay, so those are the city areas, right? So right now, we the Romans, you know, Roman side only has ex outside the city. So city areas anywhere in here. Um, player must, JM player must select one of their Judean leaders that is currently off map. The leader cannot be played for the remainder of this turn. Oh, because then it allow the Romans to gain a victory point for that. Titus lead the troops, which is for your impulse, select an area, flip 1d3 plus 2 Roman units from spent to fresh. In addition, you can flip one siege tower from spent to fresh. Very nice. And finally, to face the temple, plays part of your impulse. If area 22, temple mount over here is controlled, Roman controlled, you gain two victory points removed if played for event. Okay. And then for the Judeans, I'll just keep the cards over here, I think, actually. Raids against the siege. Play this card as part of your impulse during the end phase of this turn. The Roman player may only receive up to two reinforcements instead of six. Well, that's a big one. So remember, at the end of the turn, Romans, you get six reinforcements out of zones. You can only get two if you have this. Sorting out. Uh, for your impulse, assault an adjacent area. After the assault, return all assaulting units to the area from which the assault originated. Okay. So this would be where I talk about, like, the um, Judeans, you know, attacking outside and then moving back. Keep the faith. You may roll the dice after any one Judean attack or assault roll. Okay. And then a ballista when declaring an attack or assault at three firepower. And additional defenses. After a Roman attack or assault is declared against a Judean controlled area, add three to the defensive value of the area. Ooh. As a raise against machines again. Okay. All right. So Romans first. All right. So the Romans are going. You got your cards, right? That's the draw phase. Now you're going into the impulse phase. Okay. So the Romans for their first impulse. I want to be aggressive. I want to show, I'm going to show the game off to you guys, right? So um, I want to be aggressive. I want to attack. I want to do the best I can and just go for it here. So looking at the cards, right? We have a siege ramp, which will help us get into an area. Um, a couple of ballista, which help with attacks. Um, the force into hiding. We've got to wait till we control in a city area. Hopefully that'll happen this turn. Um, and then Titus, that's just a refresh, right? Refresh the troops and deface the temple. Eh, that's probably not going to happen if you control area 22. Uh, we don't have the forces over there, so that's probably going to be one that either is... Uh, we can spend for the siege tower um, or hang on to. We'll see. So first off, siege ramp. Let's get, let's go ahead and build a siege ramp. So we're gonna for impulse, we're gonna play the siege ramps card, um, which will for your impulse select a Roman controlled area, right? Which I'm gonna select area two, women's gate, and I'm gonna build a siege ramp. I can build it on an adjacent wall section. There's only one area right here leading into new city. So a couple things. Um, one, you notice it has uh, siege equipment. It has the a, you know like Oh, no. What that means is you can't use this card. You can't play this card and build a siege ramp in areas where you can't have siege engines, which are, you can see basically over here on the east and then what maybe would be the south. I guess I'm not sure the cardinal directions, uh, but it would be areas five here. You can see that's that same symbol. Six, seven, all the way wraps around to area nine here. And then I think that's it. So these areas here, you know, you can't build siege engines over there. You can only build them over here. So... That's okay, though. We're going to build it right there. Um, in this case, a siege ramp. And then this one is removed and played for the event. So we're going to go ahead and not discard it, right? We're not going to discard it, put it on discard pile. We're actually going to remove it from the game. So I'm going to place it over here on the left. Um, we built that, and that's it. So Because that's, you know, it's an uh, alternate impulse game, right? So you get, like, probably one little action. It may not be a little, but you get one action, right? And then it goes to the other side. So now, if you're a damn player, okay, a siege ramp has been built here for the Romans. The... Judean player is looking and saying, what do we want to do? Are we going to try to stop this siege ramp? I'm thinking we're going to try to stop it. So looking at, looking at the cards here, um, you know, this reduces reinforcements. This is sorting out to attack. This allows a reroll the dice after one Judean attack or assault. These things are probably, and this helps with an attack. I don't need to do this right now. What I'm thinking is Judean player, we want to stop that siege ramp. We want to try to destroy it. So what we can do is we can take a sp kind of a special action to we flip one of our units in an area that is adjacent to the siege ramp. So area 14 here, um, flip them to spent. And now we can roll 1d6. If we roll a six, we eliminate the siege ramp. We as the Judean player. However, you can add additional units, right? So I think it's worth the risk to say, okay, you know what? Let's actually also spend this unit. Each one is an additional plus one. So one and two. So that's an additional plus two to our die roll. So the Judean player is going to roll a 1d6 with a plus two. So as long as you roll a four, four up to yep, plus two, um, you get a six or higher, we're going to eliminate that siege ramp. So hoping for a four or higher. A three. Oh, that's terrible. So 
And unfortunately, I know we have memory of that card for a reroll. It says reroll any one Judean assault, attack, or assault. So unfortunately, that's not that's a you know not an attack or assault. That's just trying to eliminate the siege ramp. So the roll failed. Siege ramp stands, and we used up our impulse for that. So now it goes back over to the Roman player. Now the Roman player, the siege ramp's built. They got those units ready. Um, I'm feeling they're going to go ahead and launch an attack. All right, so for the Roman impulse, they're definitely going to attack. So what they're going to do is launch an assault. So the Romans have to assault across the wall, but they do have the siege ramp. So normally an assault would be, you pick what units you want to assault with, you move them into the area, you conduct the combat, which I'll explain in a minute because <laughs> one is about to occur. Um, and then when it's resolved, if there are any defending units left, the ass uh, assaulters, the attacking units, are go back to what area they came from, right? That's an assault. An attack would be one of two would either be one if you are already in an area with enemy units you just conduct an attack right so say you had moved into an area with move with enemy units which you can't do right now because of the wall um and then you just conduct an att uh, attack at some point or the light units so the units of the um judeans that are light so they have the one attack you can see they have like a um almost like throwing a spear versus the heavier units with a sword and shield or the Roman auxiliaries can conduct attack into an adjacent area. So representing, right, they have missile weapons. Um, with the siege ramp, though, the Romans are going to be able to conduct an assault. However, it's going to kind of act like a movement attack at once, meaning they're going to stay in the area depending on what happens, which looking at it, uh, unless they were roll really poorly, I'm guessing they're going to be successful, but let's go ahead and play it out. So the Romans, they built that siege ramp. The Judeans tried to destroy it. They're unsuccessful. The Romans, yep, they're activating area two for an assault. They're going to charge across the siege ramp, and they're sending everybody here from the 15th Legion. So three legionary units, and then they're also sending two auxiliary units in as well. They're sending the house, sending everybody into the area here. Um, along with that, now you get to play cards that can help either attacker or defender. So as the, for the, excuse me, for the attacker, um, Romans, they go first, or whoever is the attacker, I should say. So in this case, it's Romans. They have a ballista, remember, when declaring an attack or assault, add three firepower to that attack or assault. Um, yeah, we really like that. And also, multiple copies of this card may be played together. So for the Romans, they're going to play both because they want to cause a lot of damage and make sure they have the strongest attack possible. Now we look at the Judeans. What do they have for cards? If I remember correctly, I don't think they have any cards. They have a card that allows them to reroll a Judean attack, which is not the same. Um, Ballista, no. Raising against the Siege, no. Sortie out, no. Oh, wait a second. Additional defenses. After Roman attack or assault is declared, um, add three to the defensive value of the area. Okay, so they are definitely going to play that one. They are trying to hold back the Romans. So, how do we resolve the attack? Or, in this case, technically an assault. Very simple. You determine the attack points, which is you're going to add up the attack strength of every unit involved. So, in this case, two, two, two. One and one, right? So two, four, six, seven, eight. You're gonna add up any bonuses from cards, which is this was a total of six. So eight plus six is 14. And then you're gonna roll 2d6. You're gonna add your total to that. Then for the defender, you're going to check, you're gonna, defenders will pick a defensive unit, which in which case they'll just pick the one with the highest, seven. And then they're gonna add the number here for additional defenses, right? So any cards. And then they will add the defensive terrain um, value. So what are we looking at here? Let's resolve this combat. I mentioned before the Romans have a total of 14 right now, 14 attack. They will roll 2d6. Four and a one. So 14 plus five becomes 19. Go ahead and just place it over here. It's a total of 19 attack. The defenders are sitting at seven, eight, nine, 10. And then this defensive terrain, defensive value is plus two, so it becomes 12. They do not get to roll. So the rolling is only for the attackers. So it is 19 versus 12. You then check for a differential, in which case this differential favors the attacker by seven, right? 19 minus 12 is left over seven. And I don't believe there are any other cards involved. Nope, those are all attack cards. So the defender is going to have to suffer uh, seven damage points. Damage points can be suffered by the defender in any way they want as long as the maximum are used. 
And by the way, before we finish resolving, because I'm sure if any of you know about the game, you maybe think, well, what about the what about the leaders, Wayne? When you mentioned leaders, yes. So leaders, you could throw in at any point, either in attack or defense. So uh, in this case, it'd be Simon, right? The blue leader, the blue units here. Um, we could have thrown him in and said, okay, you know what, Simon, add your plus one. Because the defense is the back side, the, the spent side, and then the front is the attack side, the, f the fresh side. I knew, <laughs> knowing the number that I was looking at, that the Judeans wouldn't want to do that because they would end up sacrificing him and he would probably end up being eliminated or close to it. So they did not do that and they did not get that bonus from him and that's okay. So again, we have seven damage points we have to uh, figure out. One point could be flipping a fresh unit to a spent unit or retreating a face down unit to an adjacent area or eliminating a face down unit with no retreat path. Um, in this case, say we retreated them. Well, that would only be one, two, three, right? Because there's three units and it's one point to retreat a face down unit that has retreat area, which usually they do, right? We retreated to an area adjacent to them with um, the fewest number of enemy units or no enemy units. However, um, that would only be three and you have to try to get rid of, you have to spend all the points, right? As many points as you can. Or you for two points, you can move a face down spent unit to the eliminated pile when a retreat path is available, which is what's going to happen here. So because they're already spent, eliminating a unit that's spent is worth two. If they had been fresh, it would be worth three. So because they're spent, because they tried to eliminate that siege ramp, that's two points, that's two points, that's two points, two, four, six. There's one point left over. That's okay. Every Jordan unit in um, area 14 here has been eliminated. So that one point is just um, disappears. So let's resolve this. So we move our dice out of here. These cards were all uh, played. So they go into a discard pile. So I'm placing them to the side of the draw decks. These three Judean units were all eliminated. We'll place them just off the map over here to the left. And the Romans took and captured new city area 14. Um, so I will grab a control marker and I will place it, Roman control, over here. Now the Romans control a city area. Siege ramp stays there. Um, but what you do, um, I assume it stays there, I guess. I never thought of that before. But what you do have going on is the wall sections here. So the wall sections right now may be hard to see. They say plus three. When the Romans conduct regular assault, so not one like that where it was uber successful, but a more traditional assault, what will happen is those uh, areas will start being knocked down. Plus four becomes plus three, plus two, and then down to plus one. And finally, once the wall is eliminated or uh, defe uh, defeated in that area, it becomes breached. So we're gonna put a breach marker there. And the wall gets uh, breached anywhere that it connects a Roman controlled area into another Roman controlled area. So this section right here becomes breached. And this section right here becomes breached as well. Okay, that was the Roman impulse. So now it is the Judean impulse. The Romans have already broken through the wall. This is not good for the Judeans. Um, they could try to push them back um, and they probably are going to, but we'll see how successful that'll be. So let's look at a couple things here. So they have the Judeans, it's their impulse. So they have Ballista um, for conducting a higher powered attack. They have Keep the Faith, which allows them to re-roll an attack, which is not a bad one. Rage Against the Siege, remember it allows them to uh, oh, that prevents the reinforcements. That's that one. And then Sortie Out is the one that leaves the walls. Right now, I think that they are looking at the segment here, the walls, and they... Oh, and of course, of course, guys, we flip the Roman units to spent. Obviously, don't forget to do that. The excitement of filming the video, right? And showing everything off. So always remember, once they've completed the impulse, any units that have moved, attacked, whatever, they will be flipped to their spent side. Okay, for the Judeans, oh man, this is a tough one. I think they want to try to get an attack in here. So what they're going to do, um, they're going to conduct an assault using the Ballista here. Yeah, definitely that's what they're going to do. So, and then keep that Keep the Faith card in mind. So here's what here's what the Judeans want to do, because I'm going to push them out of here. They're going to conduct an assault. They're going to send all these units, activate Area 13, and send them into Area 14. And they're going to conduct their assault. They're going to play Ballista card that adds a plus three. The Romans, I don't believe they have anything right now. No, they do not. So the Judeans are going to uh, use those four. 
conduct an assault with a plus three. So that'll be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then it gets to roll 2d6. Eight, pretty good roll. That puts it at 15. 15 attack versus the defending Romans get to pick. They'll pick one of their legionary units with his eight. And then the defensive train was two. So that becomes 10. So 15 versus 10. And I don't think they're going to play keep the faith because they like that roll. The eight is a pretty good roll. So they will leave that. So there's five, um, five uh, damage points that the Romans have to accrue or have to spend. Excuse me. So how are they going to spend them? Well, they don't want to lose the area, obviously. And they don't want to eliminate a bunch of units. So they don't want to give up control of the area. So if they say, hey, re let's retreat all five, you know, all five or eight, a retreat is for spent, or excuse me, a yep, spent unit retreating. Um, that means the... Judeans will take New City back over. I don't really want that, right? So I think what we'll do for the Romans, they will go ahead and eliminate an auxiliary. So that's two. So eliminating a face down unit with a retreat path is two. That's two. And then they'll retreat an auxiliary. Three, four, five. They'll go ahead and do that. So. That'll leave one behind that spent all the attack points, just not quite enough. Um, actually, it would have been a good idea to have the leader involved. I should have done that, but it's too late now. I'm not going to go back and do that. So, sorry, Judeans. They'll have another opportunity. So, what happens, right? So, they failed their assault, right? So, now they are retreated back to Area 13. And they will go ahead and flip over to spent side. The attacker, even if they have less, their attack number is lower than a defender, by the way, they don't suffer any losses. So it's a very attack centric sort of game and system, right? It's, it favors the attacker, at least in the sense of you want to be aggressive as much as possible um, for the most part. Okay. So now it goes back to the Roman impulse. Um, the Romans, they have some cards they want to play, but I think right now they don't want to mess around with that stuff. They want to get some units, um, yeah, they want to get some units up there to help them out. So what they're going to do is they're going to go ahead and activate area one here. And they're going to move these three uh, legionaries here from area one into area 14. And how should I move? Oh, shoot, should I leave an auxiliary? No, that's what they'll do. And then they'll flip them over to the spent side. So the 12th legion here. I don't, as far as I've seen in the, new, uh, in the rules, there's no prohib, uh, nothing prohibiting, um, you know, different legionaries. So like we have 15th legion, 12th legion from being in the area and acting together, fighting together. I haven't seen anything that limits that. So you know, I play them together. And that is it for the impulse. They activated area one, moved them into here, you know, because the wall is breached, they're able to. And now they're there. That way they're getting that foothold and hanging on to that foothold. So now we go over to the Judean impulse. All right. The Judeans, they're going to try a little bit of, let's see, what would be the chance? Would they be able to even force them out? So I'm trying to think here in my head. I'm wondering if they had, because um, you don't want to leave a unit with, or excuse me, an area with no units in it, because then it can be captured. Um, basically, you could, the Romans can do an assault and you'd automatically capture it. So they don't want that. Um, if they attacked with, let's see, did an assault, so assault from an adjacent, um, they assaulted from 15 to 14. They sent two. That'd be a two, and they'd roll 2d6. So the most they could do would be 14. Um, look at the defenders. Highest is eight, nine, ten. So they could one, two, three, four. They could get they have to roll max though. Maybe we're trying. And they get a re-roll. Should we do it? Let's do it. You know what? Why not? So the Judeans are gonna say, you know what? We're gonna try to drive those Romans out. So they're gonna go ahead and conduct an assault in activate area 15. These two units, go ahead and move them up. A total attack of one, two, and they're gonna roll two d six. <laughs> really going on a twelve here. Oh, a nine. That is not good enough, right? Because it'd be nine, ten, eleven, eight, nine, ten. It will cause one damage point. That's not. They want more than that. So they're gonna play the Judean player will play keep the faith. Reroll the dice after any one Judean attack or assault. You can select which roll to use. So either the nine, which causes one, or a 10. Well, not quite enough, but it's still not too bad. So 10, 11, 12, 12 uh, damage points or attack points, I should say. And then eight, nine, 10 defense points. So 12 minus 10 is two. So the Romans have two uh, defense points they have to suffer. So they will go ahead and just retreat 
two of their legionary units here. And the Judeans will have to retreat back to the area they originated from and flip to their spend side. And now we go over to the Roman impulse. All right, so the Romans, they looking pretty good holding the area here. Now a downside, well, no, they're gonna, yeah, they're gonna, they're definitely gonna probably hold it. Um, and they may be able to cause some additional damage too, depending on what happens here. So I'm wondering, as the Romans though, they get some other stuff they wanna do, don't they? All right, the, I really should have used the assignment on that one. That's, oh shoot. Now I feel kind of silly on that one. That really was the time to use the, the leader. I mean, um, shoot. Oh man. All right. Well, I don't want to cheat and go back and do it. So we'll just pretend. Dang, I'm, not, I'm not doing a good job showing off the game, guys. I totally forgot to use one of the leaders so far. Ugh. And as a Judean player, you want to use that member because if you don't, then at the end of the turn, it's going to be um, a, a miss, like a missed opportunity. So anyway, for the, uh, speaking of Judean leaders, though, the Romans, they're going to go play um, Force into Hiding. So Force into Hiding is, plays your impulse. If the Roman player controls one or more city areas, which they control one, um, the Judean player selects a Judean leader that's currently off map. In this case, they'll just select John the Purple and place him on the turn track at two and showing that he's off map. So the Romans are going to get one victory point for him being off the map and not being spent this turn. So, all right, that is the other impulse though. So now we go over to the Judean impulse. I've sorted out, rage against the siege, I think. So I'm going to attack from area 18 into area 14. So I'll attack with this single poor, poor unit. But they will send in, dun -dun -dun, Simon the leader, finally use them, right? We're a plus two, so now it's a total of three attack. Three attack, um, and then the versus the defense is going to be eight, nine, ten. So three attacks, they want to get at least a... Well, they got a chance here, actually. Let's see what they get. Oh, four. That is not enough. Four, five, six, seven versus eight, nine, ten. Attack is less than defense. It means there are no damage points to, that the defender has to use or has to spend. Um, but remember, though, this game, there's no really no penalty for attacking for the most part, unless you just leave like an area, you know, not no defender. So nothing happens. They will go back to um, area 18. Okay, so now we'll go back to the Roman impulse let's see what the romans are going to do all right the roman player he's going to do um he's going to discard to face the temple and he's going to build a siege engine so he is going to build a siege tower i guess i should say a two strength that's two um then discard the card remember this event here is removed if played for the event it's not for the event we can use it to build a siege tower so let's put it in the discard pile and we get to put a siege tower right here in area 14. Let's for the Roman Impulse. Now we go over to the Judeans. Um, they're going to play... They're going to play Raids Against the Siege. So, play this card as part of Impulse. During the end phase of your turn, the Roman player may only receive up to two reinforcements units instead of six. So, we'll just place it over here as a little bit of a reminder saying, hey, don't forget that card. Um, now it goes back to the Roman Impulse. The Romans here, looking around. So, they breach here. They have a couple ideas. They could use Titus leads of troops, which select an area and flip units from spent to fresh, and they could try to start attacking or get them moved up. Um, may actually be a good idea. So let's do, as the Romans, let's do that. So they're gonna play Titus leads of troops, impulse, select an area, select area uh, two, women's gate, um, roll a 1d3 plus two. So 1d3 writes, you roll 1d6, divide by, oh, excuse me, divide by two. Um, so one, you know, one to two is one, three to four, two, et cetera. So three, so it's two plus two. So we have four, we can flip four Roman units from spent to fresh and a siege weapon. But we're picked this area. There's no siege towers there. So let's say four of them. Let's do all these, uh, legionaries here. Sorry, auxiliary. And then we'll go ahead and, well, that's it though. That's it. They spent the card. That's our impulse. So now it is the Judean impulse. And see if they want to try to attack an area or anything like that. They could potentially do that. Um, they're gonna try. I'll show you guys a. I'll show you guys a ranged attack basically. So they have. Let's see. We have right. I think of a good area to do it at. Um, maybe right over here. So from area twelve to area. 
Hmm. Yeah, area 12 to area uh, 10 here. So we're going to do an attack. So the Jains are going to, uh, the Judeans are going to do an attack with light units. Light units can attack into an adjacent area. So they're not assaulting, moving into it. They're just attacking. So I'm not playing that card. I'm just going to do an attack just as usual. One, two, three, and roll 2d6. Six, seven, eight. So eight, nine, 10, 11 versus it would be nine, right? So let's go ahead and pick a unit and put this, uh, Roman Legionary here with a 9, and then a 10, or the, excuse me, that is only a plus 1, so that is 10. What was that 11? 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Yep, so 1 damage point, so the Romans have to suffer 1 damage point. Um, so they'll go ahead and flip this auxiliary from... Okay, that's it. And then, of course, they are flipped to spent. So, well, didn't do anything there. Hoping to maybe get some units retreated or something like that, but it happens. All right, so let's go back to the Roman um, Impulse. The Romans, um, they want to get some men moved up, so they're going to go ahead and activate Area 2 for movement, and they're going to move. Now, keep in mind stacking limits. I don't know if I've talked about them yet. Um, you can have, the Romans can have up to five combat units in the area, and then any number of siege towers. The Judeans can have six combat units. So one, two, move them in. And that's one, two, three, four, five, right? Yep, and that's it. And now they will be flipped to their spent side, of course. All right. Now we go over to the Judean turn. I think Judeans, for their impulse, I don't think are going to do anything else. Obviously, they could conduct some more range attacks to see if that does anything. I just don't think it's going to do anything. Um, like they could try. I don't I think it's going to make a difference, though. So, eh, let's try a couple to see what we can get. Should we do sortie out at all? Can't sortie from there. Ooh, we could sortie from here. What's that? Ooh. Maybe worth trying. Then they return back. Let's do that. So let's play sortie out. So the, for the Judeans, we'll play sortie out. Assault in adjacent area. Return all units after the assault. You're going to move from Harad's Palace down here. The nice thing I like about it is I would never want to leave Harad's Palace exposed, but we get to sortie back in. So we'll attack and roll the dice here. Six, seven. That eh, could have been a better roll. So seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve versus nine, ten. So two damage points out for the Romans. Simple. One, two. Uh, if it rolled a little better, we'd have to force some units to retreat or maybe even potentially eliminate them. So, bummer there. And they will go back to Rod's Palace. A little risky there, but I'm not too worried about it. Wow, we played out all the cards. Okay, so um, now it goes back to the Roman turn, Roman impulse. Now, you have to understand, right, so we have had some assaults. We've had um, attacks. We've had movement. Um, we've used a bunch of cards. The cards are gone. It turns out over if you don't want it to be, right? You can still activate areas as long as you want to keep activating areas until the Roman passes or you do run out of fresh units. So for the Romans, they got a pretty strong force right here. They're going to go ahead and try to attack here, even without any help. They're going to launch an, I should say, not attack, I should say assault. They're going to launch an assault from area 3 to area 15. And they're going to send in all um, of their units here. So let's do an assault in an area where there's a wall segment. So... Two, four, six, seven, eight. Um, eight attacker, or excuse me, eight attack strength combined with a roll four. That ain't gonna cut it, by the way, but you know, it is what it is. Um, so eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Um, 12 on the assault, on the attack. The defenders, they're going to pick uh, this unit here with seven. Area is plus two, um, so it puts them at nine. And then the Romans are crossing a <laughs> plus four wall during their assault, which adds plus four to the defender. So seven. 8, 9, plus 4 is 13. So what did I say? 2, 4, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 12 to 13. Attacker is less than a defender. Defender doesn't have to take any damage points at all. Luckily, though, like I've mentioned before, luckily for the Romans, is that the attackers just don't really suffer from attacking. It's it's very a game system definitely designed to be aggressive during. So they go back to area 3 and flip over to spent. Okay, now it is the Judean Impulse. Um, the Judean players can go ahead and, let's see, they want to kind of make sure this area doesn't get too weak right now. They go ahead and activate area 19 and move this unit into here just to make sure they get some units over here. Um, it goes back to the Roman impulse. The Romans, they're going to pass. Um, they're ready to get the turn moved on. The next turn, get all their units refreshed, and they can continue the attack. So the Romans will go ahead and pass. Um... The Judeans do not have a card to play to um, stop the pass, so the turn ends. 
So turn one ends. Uh, we'll go ahead and play out the end phase. Then maybe, well, we'll definitely play out the end phase. Let's go to that. All right, end phase. So um, cards may be discarded. However, <laughs> both sides, the other side has any cards in their hand. So no worries there. Um, if there were any out of supply markers, which the, only the Judeans have, they would be removed, but there are none because it's the you know, end of the first turn. But we do check for the Judean supply restrictions. We What we do is we roll to see if it goes up, and then we check for Judean areas unable to refresh. So very simple. Um, you have this chart over here. Each turn, depending on the turn later in the game, there's a higher chance to see if this supply restriction counter goes up. So it turns one to two, it increases on a five to six on a one D six. So I like to roll for the Romans since it's, you know, considering like the sieging and hurting the um, Judeans. So on a five to six, it goes up. A one, so it does not go up, so it stays at a one. Now you check the Judean areas unable to refresh. Restriction level is one to two. Yep, it's a one. One D three minus one. So just like before, we'll go ahead and roll. You know, one to two is a one. Five, five to six would be three. However, it is minus one, so it drops to two. So the Judean player gets to choose two areas to mark out of supply. Um, they have to be areas that have um, spent units, right? So you can't pick an area that, you know, oh, I pick, hey, look, I picked these. What do you know? You know, no, they're already, they're all fresh. They have to be areas of spent units. And two of them, especially this early game, that definitely hurts the Judean player. I'll tell you that right now. So they're going to go ahead and pick here and here. Yeah, that'll be good. Okay, these two areas here will not refresh. All right, they pick the areas. Now, next players flip all spent units and siege towers to their face, uh, to their you know face up fresh side, other than those two areas here for the Judean that we marked out of supply. All right, all the units that are supposed to be refreshed and placed to their fresh side have been. Now, the Roman player may remove any siege towers from Roman controlled areas. We only have the one right now, and we want that one there because potentially using it to break into the inner city. So we'll leave that there. Um, the Roman player then receives up to six reinforcement units. However, the Judean played, Judean player, us, played uh, raising into siege. So we only get two. The Judean, or the Roman player only gets two. What a bummer for them. So um, two units, obviously a lot more limited. Um, thinking about what are the Romans' goals are. Obviously they've broken through here, right? So they're going to be able to kind of continue to attack in here. But then you don't want that to be the only attack. You want to attack other areas. I'd say there's a good amount of units over here anyway, as is. So as the um, Roman player, I would go ahead and say the, I did not flip them over to their first side. Make sure everyone is flipped over the first side. Um, Roman player, let's go ahead and build some forces over here to start attacking Harad's palace. So um, you can put, what do we say? We get two now, thanks to the card, and two instead of uh, six. So let's do a fifth legionary and another one here. The zone here, they move, they can attach. So from this zone D, let's say, you can move into area eight, area nine, area 10. So let's move them right here and build up forces. At least we got a little group right here. Okay. All right, so after the reinforcements are done, um, if the Roman player controls areas 22 and 27, which they do not, they would run automatically. After that, you check for those VP locations of who does control each of them, gains one victory point. So the Judean player controls both 27 and 22. Um, so they are going to gain one victory point for each. So that puts them on the board, puts them at two. And then if they controlled all city areas, they would get a bonus one. They don't. The Romans took new city, so they don't get a bonus there. Um, now the Roman player, you check for those Judean leaders, right? Simon, he's on the board. Oh, excuse me. He, um, I picked him up. He was right here. Um, so that does not count for the Romans. But remember, John was placed, thanks to that special event, he was placed off the off the board, so he was never put on the board, which means the Romans get one VP for that. So place them right here at the number one. Um, and then John will go ahead and place off, and then same with Simon, put them off board and available for next turn. And after that, oh, and after that, the it's the turn ends. So right now we're sitting out, we're gonna go into turn two here. The, we're gonna move the marker up to turn two. The uh, Judean player has two victory points. The Roman player has one. However, the uh, Judeans have only eliminated one Roman unit, this auxiliary, the which the type doesn't matter. Um, and then the Roman player has eliminated three Judean units. So definitely um, helping out the Romans there. Other than that, you would start turn two. You would check right at the very beginning. 
draw phase, right? You draw hands of cards, you draw to whatever the max uh, hand size is. Since neither side has any cards in your hands right now, it's both are gonna get the maximum card draw. You go to the impulse phase, back and forth, right? End phase, etc. continue. Obviously looking at the map right now, the Romans would continue probably um, spreading out from here. They had a nice breach right here. They're gonna continue spreading out, take over these outer city areas, start attacking the walls here, along with, I'm thinking the Romans gonna try to attack into Herod's palace here. The Judean player, um, either they can try to defend here or they may activate some of these outer city areas and start moving these units back into the inner city behind another set of walls. Because when you have no wall defenses like this, it really hurts the Judean player, obviously. So if I was a Judean player going forward, I'd probably go ahead and advance and retreat into the inner city walls here. So, all right, I hope that uh, playthrough here showed you guys how the game plays and you got a good idea of how it works. Um, if you have any questions, let me know. Um, I definitely will have, if not any more playthrough videos, I'm not sure on this one. Um, it would be quite a long video, quite a long series of videos, and so I probably won't do it. Sorry, guys. Um, but I definitely will have an overview and review on this game coming soon. So hope you guys enjoyed it. You've made it this far. Appreciate the subscription. It's free. Just click the button. Also, thumbs up. And, of course, comment below and let me know what you think of the game and of my video. And until next time, everybody, later.